behalf of the Pan American Badminton Confederation, we warmly welcome you to our Coach Corner program. My name is Richard Wong, and it's my pleasure once again to be today's moderator. In today's session, we are pleased to have some of the most emblematic personalities in the world of badminton. Please allow me to introduce your own Bandi, Van Dijk, and Jakob Olenschlegel from Netherlands and Denmark, respectively, who today will talk to us about an important topic, Center of Excellence Badminton, Denmark. Before giving you over to Professor Van Dyke and um, Olin Schlegel, allow me to tell you a little about Professor Van Dyke. He is, a, uh, he is a head coach for the Center of Excellence, former national coach of Germany. He's a former professional badminton player, having won bronze at the European Championships in 1996, and his highest world ranking was number seven. And Jakob is the development and high performance senior manager. He's a former national coach of Germany, also a former national junior coach of Denmark. Good afternoon, Professors Van Dyke and Olenschlegel, and welcome to our program. Thank you for joining with our audience and receiving us from your home in Copenhagen. We invite you to take control and share your screen. Can you see it now? Yes, that's perfect. Good. Good. Um, well, today's webinar will be about the Center of Excellence. Um, Jakob Eunschleger and me, Jeroen van Dijk, will do the presentations of it. Um, I'm going to talk about the history of the CUE and the uh, daily practice that we are doing. And Jakob is going to talk about the uh, CUE administration and um, the logistics behind the COE. But before we start, I would like to show you a video of Daniel Macias, who has been chosen to, to be at the uh, Center of Excellence a couple of times. And I'd like to know, uh, I'd like to show you why she chose to come to the COE. Um, I really love to come here uh, because it's I think the training is really good, it's really intense, uh, the level is uh, really high, there are a lot of players uh, from all over the world, uh, and it's really nice to have the opportunity to train with them, and, and yeah, I think also the program, uh, the training program, um, is really good for me, it's different from my country, and here I have a lot of players, uh, better than me, so I think um, I improve a lot here. And, well, mostly because I really like this city, and um, I think here we have like this really big team and, and a lot of different things we can uh, use for training and to As said before, I will talk a little bit about the history of the CUE. Um, Badminton Europe has already a long time a wish of, of uh, creating a high performance center. And in April 2016, it was time um, to, to start to create a, a, a center. So they did that at the uh, annual delegates meeting. And from May to August 2016, we started to prepare all the documents. So we made the business plan, the tender documents and the budgets. Um, we sent, of course, the tender documents out and we got in October 2016, 10 bits from seven countries. Um, out of all the bits, um, we visited them all and out of all the bits, we collected five and the board of directors uh, made a decision in January 2017 to go to Holbeck. Um, the location of the Tender of Excellence is in Denmark. You see here the map of Europe. Uh, Denmark is in red. And if we go a little bit closer, you see that uh, Holbeck is the red dot, dot on the island of Zealand. If we zoom a little bit more in, then you can see that uh, Holbeck is around 45 minutes away from the airport and it takes around one and a half hour by train to go to the center. So we are very well connected and, and we have many players who come in, in and out. So being close to the airport is very important for us. Um, our Badminton Europe office is also 45 minutes away. It's close to, to Copenhagen. So 
our office is also very nearby and it makes everything working very well. Um, when our board was making the decision to move to Holbeck, it was all the decisions were all made on drawings by the architects. Because when we made the visit, uh, they were digging a hole in the ground to make a lake. And um, you see here the different pictures. So it was always a little bit of, uh, a gamble for us to, to, uh, to choose Holbeck, but it turned out to be all well. Um, if you look at the uh, uh, drawing here, you can see that there are many different sports uh, in, in Sportsbühne. We have uh, uh, tennis courts, we have a swimming pool, we have eight badminton courts. Um, there are outside soccer courts, uh, indoor for handball, basketball and, and handball. So we are in, in very nice uh, facilities. Um, while all that was going on, um, all the preparations to, to start up the COE, um, we also uh, organized selection camps. Uh, we did two of them, and the first one was made in Weyen. Um, At that time, we were not aware of where the COE was going to be, because we were full in, in progress of making all the decisions. Uh, anyway, we started this project, um, and it was all made to find out uh, which players are interested in training at the COE, uh, to get contact to them, and to find out which coaches are interested in the project. Um, the second camp uh, was done in May 2017. At that time, we knew already where the center was going to be. Um, at this camp, camp, we selected players and we also made the final deals with the coaches who were interested in becoming part of, of the COE. Um, at this time, our official facilities were not ready, so we were still uh training at a school um, who was helping us uh, in the startup phase um we opened the uh center of excellence the first september 2017 so tomorrow we're getting four years old um we selected in the camps uh, 15 players so we have uh, five women singles and 10 men singles players and we had three and a half coaches as you have seen before um, we spent a lot of time planning, so we were building up the structure. We made a lot of plans, but then starting to work in reality is always the big challenge. So we had to find out uh, how the coaching team was going to work. We had to set up the administration. We wanted to have a physio team. Uh, we wanted to have a coach for the weight training. Uh, we had to help the players with the life outside the training. Um, Badminton Europe is not only interested in um, in having a training center, but they also want to organize projects at the COE. So we have been doing courses, setting up courses, um, mainly coaching courses and a World Academy of Sport course. Um, because we started with 15 players and, and the goal is to get around 22 players. So recruitment of new players uh, is something that is constantly going on. Um, if you look at the picture here, you can see uh, eight different ways of how we are recruiting players to the COE. As said before, we were in the first one and a half year at uh, Steinhus, which is a high school. And we have created a very nice relationship with them. And we have players who are doing high school and are practicing with us at the same time. And if they are happy and if everything evolves well, then they are coming full time to us. So that's one way of getting players. Then federations are sending players to us, and this can be for short time or for long term. Then we have a very good program in the uh, CC scholarships. Um, this is funded by the BWF and basically means that each continent has a spot um, at the COE. And it's up to the uh, continents how they want to divide these uh, scholarships. Then Badminton Europe is also uh, investing in scholarships. Uh, so we give a scholarship to players so that they can come to the COE, uh, try the COE and get a whole feel how it is. And maybe they stay with us or we have good contact and they want to use 
the CUE as sparring or as new ideas for their training. We also giving scholarship to coaches. So coaches can come to us, they can experience the, the CUE. Um, we have open books, so we explain what they do. They can be a part of the practice. So for them also a good experience. Um, they go home and, and spread the good words about how we are doing our work. Then we are sending coaches to tournaments. Um, we send these coaches, of course, to take care of our own players. Um, but they are also uh, promoting the CUE and are talking to coaches and players if the CUE can help them in any way. Then we have a project uh, which is about the certificated training centers. Um, they are all divided uh, over Europe. Um, and with them, we have once a year a meeting and we are also in close contact with them. And we are trying to uh, have players placed at their training center or, or players to, towards our training center. And then we have, of course, our own players and they might, through all their good news that they spread or how happy they are, they might uh, attract new players. Then there's actually one more thing that we are doing. We are also uh, organizing women's singles and men's singles camps. Um, this is to help our federations and to uh, organize camps so that they can prepare for tournaments or get new sparring. And out of these tournaments, we also get new players. But um, in June 2019, we changed to the new facilities. Um, you saw already the, uh, uh, the drawings before, but this is the real thing. We have a very nice badminton hall. As you can see, it's only made for badminton. We have eight courts. Um, the lighting and everything is totally adjusted to badminton. So a very pleasant or nice surrounding to be in. Um, with the whole deal that we made with Sportsbühne, um, we also included the use of the swimming pool. Uh, which is very nice for our players because on top of uh, doing swimming and generation in, in the pool, there's a hot tub and there's sauna. So in the weekends, uh, players can use that as well, also during the week, of course, but for generation, very good. And every now and then when players are injured, they can still uh, do active uh, uh, build-up phase again. Then we have a very nice gym uh, in two floors. Um, which we can use uh, almost all day. Um, and we always get very, very good feedback from, from the players that, that this is a very good uh, gym. Then uh, the players are living very near by the center. So a whole 100 meter walks from, from their bed uh, to the practice. Um, I think it is very nice. Um, they have a little kitchen in the room. So they can cook themselves or they can eat in the restaurant of, of, uh, of the hall. Um, they have their own showers. So basically they have a lot of privacy and, and the feedback that we get is, is that it's very good. But in August 2019, uh, the COE has been working the way we planned. Um, we had 22 permanent uh, players. We had continental scholarships coming in. We had uh, uh, scholarships from Babington Europe coming in and we had guest players. So overall, we were doing fine. And one of the interesting things is that uh, from the continental uh, scholarships, we had three players, uh, Fernando, Alonso and Uriel, who did their preparation uh, before the Youth Olympic Games in uh, Buenos Aires uh, with us. Um, so that was very positive and, and they were so happy that uh, out of that, the CC scholarships came where many of the uh, uh, players from, from Penn has, has come to us. Good. But then uh, Corona hit us, um, as has done for many of you. Um, in March 2020, uh, we had to lock down. Um, and we had to lock down until June 2020. Uh, what we did was we kept uh, in contact with the players. Um, of course, our players are from all over the world. 
and there were different restrictions. So we had players who were still able to play a little bit badminton in their local hall, or we had players who can only do some running. And, and we have been uh, helping them as much as, as, as we could with, with their training programs. Uh, the coaching team also stayed online. So, so the COE was still operating without any players. Then in 2020, um, we started to uh, we started up with uh, 20, with 12 players, and and the focus was on bringing all the players back again and and start the whole COE up again. Um, with all this Corona, we had our guidelines. Um, because it was not so easy to come back into the country. So from the office, Jacob, Jacob and Marie Carmen has been helping a lot uh, with all the paperwork to bring players back in. And we are still, although many of our players are, are vaccinated, we are still doing weekly tests, which is very easy uh, to do in Denmark. And, and, and by that, we have been able to, to keep uh, Corona under control. In, since the start in June 2020, we have only missed one day due to Corona. So, so overall, I'm, I'm very happy how the players have been behaving and how the whole team has been behaving in, in these difficult times. But our training philosophy, so our daily today working, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the goal setting, about the tournament planning, about badminton training, uh, the individual uh, development areas on and off court and the physical training. If I start with goal setting, um, when players come in, we always have a talk first to find out uh, where they are, what kind of training they have been doing, um, do they have some injuries, um basically to find out what their goals are so we can adjust the practice as good as we can so that the players are getting the most out of it um with our own permanent players um we are basically focusing on on two types of goal setting so it is uh, goal orientated um where we are looking at the tournaments what kind of results do they have to get into tournaments or what kind of ranking they need and then we are focusing on development, where we are looking at strokes, uh, maybe strategies, uh, things they are missing in the games. Then, of course, we are also in close contact with our federations or maybe even the NOCs, and they are also uh, affecting this, this goal setting. If we go to the tournament planning, um, all our permanent players uh, have, a, have a contract. And in the contract, it says that they need to play 10 international tournaments. Um, these tournaments are the base for the training for the training planning. So, so we see which tournaments they want to play. And the difficulty, of course, with us is that we have different uh, level of players. So we're trying to, to make the, our planning as best as possible for, for our players. Um, some of the players they get uh, their tournament planning from the federations or it can be that the players are making them themselves at the end of the day it is the player or the federation or the federation and the players together who are making the the, the tournament planning and we are giving advice um, badminton europe is not giving any funding for tournaments so it's all financed by the federations or by the players themselves then, of course, in Europe, um, each country or many countries have clubs, and these clubs are organizing uh, team matches. And many of our players are playing in those leagues. Um, they are playing to earn money and to fund their whole badminton career. Um, here again, we are playing the role where we give advice, and we are very careful not to become uh, player managers. Uh, because we don't want to, to interfere or get any problems between a player and a club. So this is something that the players all need to uh, arrange themselves with the clubs. Then the whole structure uh, around uh, the daily practice. Um, we have a women's singles and a men's singles group. Um, at the moment, we have 13 players, eight women's singles and five men's singles players. 
at the moment we are a little bit down on permanent players, but this is due to the fact that it's um, after the Olympics where some of the players needed to go home, uh, do studies and, uh, and do some other things. Uh, corona has also not been helping, so many plans has been pushed forward and they need to follow up with that. Then we have one coach who is responsible for the women's single group and we have one and a half coach who is responsible for the men's singles group. And then uh, the scholarship players or our guest players, they are divided over the groups. Um, uh, for example, uh, Bai Wen Zhang, uh, such a good player, so she has been practicing with us in, in the men's singles group. And then we have, of course, the physio treatment and screening, and I will come back to that um, on a later slide. Good. Then our coaching team, uh, here you have me on the picture. Um, I am the head coach of the COE. I am responsible for the men's singles group. So I make the plans for, for the men's singles group. I have uh, individual talks with the players and, and guide our players as, as good as I can. Then I'm also on top of that managing the, the COE. So I'm, I am dividing who's going to the physio, um, daily talks with my coaching staff. And I'm also having the contact with the office. Then we have John Dinesen, um, also a Danish coach. Uh, he is responsible for the women's singles group. Um, he's delivering the daily sessions, uh, the guidance of the, of the players, making the goal setting, uh, making the tournament plans. Um, and he is also responsible for the weight training together with our uh, physio team. Then we have Peter Jensen. Um, he is together with me responsible for the, for the men's singles group. Uh, he is at the moment responsible for four players. He is also delivering uh, many training sessions. Um, me as a head coach, I have, of course, uh, other things to do as well. So every now and then I am not in the hole and then he uh, helps me with delivering the training sessions. Um, here we have the weekly schedule. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, week 35. So this is basically the week we are in. All the blue sessions are the badminton sessions. Uh, you can see that we are practicing from eight in the morning until 10.30. And then in the afternoon, we have on Monday and Wednesday, we have weight training sessions. And on the Tuesday and the Thursdays, we have badminton session. Um, as you can see in this week, um, the physical sessions are colored red. Um, this week we have more focus on, on build up. Um, so you can see that we, we are in different phases and we have diff different build up uh, systems, all to, to, to help the players as much as we can towards the tournaments that they are playing. Then the individual development areas on and off court. Um, our problem is, of course, that we have so many players who are traveling to all kinds of different tournaments. And it's not possible for us to be at every tournament. Um, we cannot do it physically and we can also not do it uh, financially. So what we do is uh, each time players are coming back, we sit together with the players and we uh, analyze the matches. And out of this analysis, we, we, we create focus points what they should uh, practice on. Of course, it's not all about badminton. Um, we also have the individual talks with the players where we help them with uh, things outside the court. And that can be mental training. Uh, it can be a dietist, um, maybe extra help with the physio team because of an injury or these kinds of things. So there, there's a lot of work being done also outside the courts. Then as said before, here we have the physio team, uh, Christina and Mikkel. And they have been slowly uh, coming into the CUA and developing themselves as well. They're very good and highly educated sport physiotherapists. Um, they are uh, making screenings twice per year. Uh, we do this to find the weaknesses within the players. So we are aware where weaknesses are. Um, we are also doing the screening to find out what their starting levels are. So how strong are they uh, in this and this muscle? In case injury happens, then we can easily bring them up to the same level again. 
And based on the screening, they also make uh, injury pre prevention programs, uh, which most of the players are doing in, in the warm up, uh, basically uh, to help them getting stronger in the areas where they are missing some, some power. Then lately, we have also brought them into the weight training sessions. Um, so they are writing the programs for the players. Um, they correct with the technique in the exercises, uh, follow up after injuries. And, and overall, uh, this creates a better flow for us um, in between the sessions. And it's very easy for them and for us uh, to work because we, we don't have so many partners that we have to talk to. That was my presentation so far, and now we will go on to Jaco. Good. I'm gonna. Yeah, thank you. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the CU administration, or a little bit what's happening behind the scenes in order to make uh, the whole COE work. Um, we have uh, heard a lot from Jorn about how the daily practice are and how everything is organized at the COE with the coaching team, with the physios and, and, and the physical training and, and, and so on. But uh, it's also important uh, when you have a training center like the COE that we have a focus on how we bring players in to the COE, how they are accommodated and, and how they will take care of, of basically of, of the daily life. So let's have a look a little bit closer to, to how we normally organize this. But before going into this, uh, I would like to, to, to show a little bit about the, the mission and the vision of, of the COE. So please, next slide, Jorn. Next uh, slide, Jorn, please. Well, when the COE was uh, put in place, um, it was with a mission of making European badminton competitive in a global context. It means that the, the COE is a part of the high performance strategic plan. Uh, and it's one of the, the areas that we work on in order to, to keep uh, European badminton on a high level and try to, to develop it even further. Um, when we started the COE, the vision was to provide high quality and inspiration aspirational training base for talent and deserving players from all over Europe. That means actually we want to, to create a training center uh, where we can develop players. So it means that they, if, if a player is coming from a country where they don't have a, a national setup, then the COE could, could be the place for them to continue their development uh, as, as players and becoming high level players. So in, in, or say in context of uh, European badminton, this will mean that that we will try to develop the sub elite who could also uh, try to challenge the, the, the top nations who has their own uh, setup. The long term vision of the CUE is to be is is to be more than in just a training center. Uh, basically, we want to create cooperation between our member associations and also um, develop European and world badminton. So. As you all mentioned, it, it's also about finding ways of how the COE can be more than just training for players. It is to develop coaches. We have our coaching scholarships, but also delivering courses, uh, for example. We are always trying to find new ways that the COE can be used in European badminton in order to develop our high performance level. Um, Latest, we had our uh, certificated training center meeting, our annual meeting uh, at the uh, at the COE, and it's also a way to show which kind of level that uh, we are working on. So uh, our member association could find it interesting to to send uh, players to, to the COE. Next slide, uh, please. When we get uh, approached by the players, uh, and we thankfully does that quite often, um, we have some uh, spe uh, specific criteria that we look for. First of all, we, we are looking for full-time professional badminton players. The COE is uh, a high-level training center, which means that uh, it's not possible to be part of it if you only want to practice like five times uh, per week. Normally, we have a training week of, of eight to 10 sessions 
plus uh, physical training and, and, and other activities. And it's uh, expected that if you want to be a part of the center, you need to take part in, in the full program. There needs to be really good reasons for if you have to have uh, some exemptions. We have a few players who is quite young, who is uh, still studying uh, at the, for example, the, the college, uh, which means that they need to be in school at certain times. And of course we are flexible when, uh, when working with these players, we do acknowledge that the a, a dual career approach to the center, but it's important for us to, to know that there's an ambition and, uh, and, and a goal for the players to be as good as possible. So it means that for us, uh, we try to help uh, as many players as, as possible, but they need to have the desire and commitment in order to be uh, top class uh, players uh, in the future. We are patient with the players. We want to develop them over time. Uh, but of course, we need to, to see that the players have the same goals as we have uh, for them. Um, we can never say that they will become world champions. Uh, that's a little bit out of our hands, but we will do our best in order to make them as good as possible. Then uh, you want to also inform that the, all the players need to play uh, a minimum, minimum of 10 international tournaments per year. It's also to, it actually, it, it's a way for the players to understand that this, uh, in order to become really good, you need to participate in tournaments. You need to, uh, what do you say, increase your your world ranking. You need to challenge yourself uh, on an even higher level. You need to compete against other European players, Asian players, Pan Am players, players from all, all over the world. Um, and we have a lot of, uh, all our players are taking part uh, in tournaments and here during COVID-19 has been a little bit more difficult, but with the players trying to qualify for the Olympics, they've been traveling uh, all over the world. Then we have a minimum age uh, of 16 years. Um, it's uh, actually quite important for us that the players coming to the CUE is very, uh, we'll say, independent and responsible. It means that they need to take care of their own situation. We don't have a person who is uh, helping players out, uh, we'll say, Every minute, uh, it's very important for us that the players become independent so they can take responsibility for their own development, their own life. We know that in a long-term perspective, that if you want to be a really world-class badminton players, nobody can do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. We've also, also seen over the years that, the, that if you're not able to handle your life outside of the court, then you will normally start to struggle in in, in growing your uh, your or the de continued development as a player. So it's very important for us that that they are independent. So especially if we have 16 years uh, old players at the CUE, we uh, we are very aware of that they are able to handle the diets. They are aware of uh, or able to handle the life to get in bed in in decent time. So they are recovered and ready to play. And it's quite easy to, 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 to check that uh, every morning. Uh, um, in the beginning, it, it's easy, but when, it's, when they've been there for, for one or two months, then it shows if they really have the, the commitment. Uh, but it is a big decision for, for 16 years old to leave their, their country, their parents, and move to Denmark. So we also, of course, uh, try to take as, as good care of them as possible. And uh, the coaching team has a uh, daily contact with, with all players. That's an important part of the CUE. Then uh, in order to get to the CUE, that uh, all the requests that, that we receive um, for players who, who wants to, to, to come to the CUE, we, uh, we individually assist uh, these uh, requests. It's actually the coaching team who's deciding uh, have the final word of if, if a player can come uh, to the CUE. We have, of course, uh, an ambition of having as many good players as possible, but also have players who has a, what to say, a high potential, which we know we can, we can, can develop uh, and, and fulfill this uh, potential. Next slide, uh, please. Well, if we look at the players who is uh, at the series, then we, it's a little bit different for, for how players are using this use. Uh, we have the permanent players who is like the foundation of, of the whole COE. They have a, a life uh, in, the, in the sport cell uh, and uh, also are, are training uh, at the COE. So this is their 
base uh, for, for their development as players. Then we also have players who's coming on short term stays that could be the BEC scholarships, but it could also be that they've just decided to come here for one or two weeks. That's for sparing, that's because it works into the tournament uh, plans. Maybe they are already in Denmark playing uh, team matches for, for a club, uh, and then they decide to, to, be, uh, to stay a little bit longer and take uh, or use the good sparing that we had to uh, have at the series. Then we also see that we have uh, players on medium term stays. So that's a little bit from three to six weeks. Um, it They might have a special, uh, what to say, goal for, for being here. They need to, to work on, on, on some special aspects. Maybe they are a little bit uh, out of uh, the national team in, in the country and need a, a training period of, of uh, six weeks in order to be really in shape. Then this is also an opportunity at the CUE. Um, then we have the long-term stays. Uh, that's the players who's there for, for, for more months. Uh, that could also be the CC scholarships uh, players. Um, for example, Lino and, and, and uh, Bavin was uh, with us for, for quite a long time and also did their Olympic preparation. Um, uh, so that's also a way that the COE is being used. And finally, we, ha we, ha we have our camps. We have national teams who is coming to us. We have women's things camp, men's things camp. Yeah, and then also the Olympic preparation. So in, in general, the COE is extremely dynamic. Uh, and, and it's also, uh, uh, we have a lot of players coming in and out. And one of the things that we always hear from the players is that, uh, or the players who arrives at the COE is that, that it's a very welcoming atmosphere at the center. We are used to players coming in out in and out and everybody's always uh, welcome with with open arms so um, yeah a big credit to, to the players next slide uh, your own please then the the team uh, behind the scenes who is uh, working with the administration is our general secretary brian airbach um, he is uh, mostly involved around the strategic and uh, the structure of uh, the coe and also uh, involved in, in recruitment uh, of, of players. Then uh, myself is also involved uh, around the strategic uh, and, and the structure part and the recruitment. And I have the daily contact uh, with, the, with the coaching team and, and, and is also responsible for the management of the COE. So Johan and I have uh, a lot of contact on, on different kind of uh, issues. That could be all from player requests. It could be according to tournament planning. It can be be, be many different things uh, that needs to be discussed. And then we have Marie Kam, who is uh, responsible for the log logistics and the accommodation of the COE. So that will be the person that uh, most players will get in contact with uh, first, uh, or at least when they have decided to come, then there's a lot of uh, paperwork that needs to be done, especially here during the COVID-19, to ensure that they can enter Denmark and can also stay at the COE and uh, have their rooms uh, ready when they arrive. So there's a lot of co communication going between the players and my camp. Also during their stay at the COE, uh, if there's any issues with the rooms or if they have any questions, then normally uh, all these questions would uh, be addressed to my camp or the coaching team. Next uh, slide, uh, Jeroen. Yeah, then we have a few videos, uh, one with Bevan Xiang and also one with Lino. So uh, yeah, please enjoy uh, their feedback on, 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 on their stay at, at the COE. They were funded by a CC scholarship uh, from the Pan Am. So when I first got invited after World Championships, I decided to come to Denmark because uh, Denmark is one of the best countries in, in badminton. And when I came to the center, I really, really liked that uh, there was a lot of players uh, coming and going. Also, the, the system of the, the coaching, I really liked it. Uh, we, have, uh, we have three coaches. We have sort of like personalized uh, training, coaches are always... Uh, around and looking and telling you what to what to work on 
uh, how to practice and stuff. So you have that uh, feedback all the time, which I think is uh, very, very important. Also, uh, there's um, being in Europe, it's really easy to play tournaments and uh, also to play leagues, which makes it uh, a good place to be here in, in Denmark. Yes, some nice words from both Lino and, and, and Bevin uh, on uh, their stays at the COE. And as both of them mentioned, they uh, had a, a, a funding, a CC scholarship funding from, uh, uh, from Pan Am. And the way that the CC scholarship is working is that it's a BWF who's funding the, the scholarships, but ECC has the possibility to send players to the COE through the CC scholarship system. So it means that the players uh, gets in contact uh, with their with the confed continental confederation and ask if there is a po possibility to to get a, a scholarship. One of the criteria for, for getting a scholarship is that the players must have the potential to qualify for the Olympics. So we are talking about uh, really, really good players, the top players who have this uh, unique uh, opportunity. And as uh, Jeroen mentioned, uh, then you can say that each uh, consensus confederation has one spot at the COE for six months. How they want to use this one spot Uh, for these uh, 26 weeks or approximately 26 weeks is up to the to the CC so they can use like a one uh, scholarship or what um, yeah for for one player for for six months they can also divide it uh, so six players can go for one month that's totally up to the um, to the continental confederations um, normally it's uh, spread out on more players because uh, then it's a better investment of, of, of a return of, of investment and uh, more players benefit from the CUE. But in the end, it's the CC that decides which players they will send to the CUE. We are, of course, in uh, close contact with the, with the, um, with the CCs and also uh, discuss uh, when and when it makes most sense for, for the players to come. But again, we don't have the final call if uh, which player is coming. We just have to make sure that they, there's a room available and it's uh, working into to the training plan. Yeah, next slide, uh, Jeroen. The price for, for being at the COE is that the, it costs uh, 1,650 US dollars for one, for one month. That can sound uh, a, a, as a lot of money, but uh, when we look at uh, what it actually covers, then I think it's actually, first of all, it, it, it's a really fair price uh, and you also get a lot of quality out of it. Uh, first of all, you have like eight to, to 10 training sessions per week with high level coaches, highly educated, a lot of international experience, have prepared a lot of players for the Olympics, uh, taking part uh, in coaching at the Olympics, at the World Championships. So you don't get better coaches uh, than the ones at the COE. Then we have accommodation in a one room apartment with the own small kitchen and bath. So there's a possibility of privacy. The accommodation is uh, close to the hall. Uh, so it's within walking distance. Uh, so there's a, no, what to say, wasting time on, on transport. Then food is also included. So you have uh, three meals uh, per day, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner uh, at the restaurant in the hall, if you decide to, 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 to take that uh, opportunity. Then you'll also receive uh, the possibility of ha having 20 minutes of physio or massage per week in order to both uh, increase re recovery, but also to if you have some injuries uh, that needs to be taken care of. Then uh, we have weight training where you'll get, um, let's say, a, a weight uh, weight training program or strength training program from uh, the physio team, which is uh, based on uh, screenings and also talks uh, with the players. You will also have free access to the gym, so you can also train on your own if needed. You actually also have free access to the hall um, uh, during the week, so you can also do extra training if if if, if you are interested in this. Then you have free access to the, yeah, here's a swimming plan. It should actually be the swimming pool. I think that's uh, more <laughs> more fun, uh, at least to be in the water. Um, but this is also some something that, that the players use. And finally, you have, um, what to say, free access to the coaching team who will be both coaching you, of course, during the, the, the training session. They will guide you on and off court. 
uh, and uh, give you sparing on, on your development as a player. So the full package is uh, it's a uh, really good and, and, and on a high quality and that's also of course reflect uh, the price but 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 the price is uh, is, is completely fair uh, and uh, yeah I think there's a lot of value for money here. Next slide please say on. Finally, uh, if you want to know more about uh, the COE, then please contact either Jeroen or I. We have the email addresses here. We, can, we are open for, for any questions you might have. You can, of course, also ask us right now. But if something pops up uh, at a later stage, then you're, of course, always uh, welcome to, to contact us. And uh, we will um, answer your questions as good as possible. Yeah. I think that was uh, the end of the presentation. Final slide, uh, Jeroen. Yes, then I think Okay, thank we'll you very much. To, to Richard, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. We will now move on to the, our question and answer section. Please, if you have any questions or comments you'd like to share, write them down in the chat box. And while we wait, um, I had a question. Question, uh, under your your list of players, a permanent player, uh, what, what qualifies as a permanent player? Um, yeah, let me, uh, yeah let, let me answer this one. Uh, you say a permanent player is a, a player who is uh, at the COE full time. So it means that they, they're living at the COE, they're training there and also going to, to tournaments. In order to, to, to be accepted as a, a permanent player, it depends on basically your, your level. Um, so if you are committed and then you have a high level, then there's a possibility of, of becoming a, a, a permanent player. Um, then we are also looking at, at, at young players who have the potential of becoming top players in, in the future. So uh, we're always in, in close contact with our member associations. And if they like have an interest in one of the players coming to the COE, then we assess this player individually uh, and then uh, give a feedback if there's a possibility for them to uh, join the COE. Okay. And uh, Shirley is asking, um, could you remind us of the minimum age of uh, the athletes who can participate in the training program at the COE? It's uh, 16 years of, of age, uh, but more importantly, uh, we need to, to have uh, assurance that, that, that this player is able to um, take care of themselves. So, so that also means that uh, we normally have contact uh, with, the, with the parents and they need to sign a, a what to say, a declaration of consent that they are able to, to take care of themselves. It also means that they, we will not accept that the parents are living at the COE. They need to live, live there by their own. So they need to be able to do their laundry and be able to, uh, to cook if, if needed. And also, of course, reaching out for help uh, in case this is needed. Uh, and so far, all the players that we have uh, has been, uh, there's been no issue. So that's uh, really, really good players who is uh, taking care of themselves. Okay, and I have a question here from Gelsey Rojas. Uh, she's asking, what is the maximum amount, amount of time a player can spend at the, uh, or spend at the COE? Well, there, there's actually no time limit for how long they can stay at the COE. It actually uh, comes down to uh, their commitment and, and uh, their, their development. In case uh, they, they, they stop being committed, then of course we'll have a talk with the players um, and uh, to find out what, what is the reasons and if it's something we can work on. But there's no uh, time limit saying like you can only be at the COE for, for two or three years. You can actually stay there for as long as possible uh, or as long as you're alive, um, as long as you are still, what I say, contributing to the training environment and to, the, to your, uh, what to say, your sparing partners. Uh, and you're still uh, developing a, as a player, then uh, there's no time limit. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm seeing if there's any more questions being asked.
when you have your training sessions in the morning and the afternoon, both are uh, monitored training sessions by a coach? So, sorry, uh, one more time. When you have, uh, I, th I think somebody was asking, they noticed that you have um, court sessions in the morning and afternoon. Both are monitored yeah. sessions by a coach. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, each of the sessions are, are with a coach. Okay. Um, this is actually a quite important, Richard, this is actually a quite important part uh, of the CUE that we always have coaches uh, in the hall. And uh, as Jeroen uh, told us about this, that we both have a men's singles group and a women's singles group. So there's uh, always two coaches and uh, normally three coaches in the hall at the same time. It's a way that we try to be as individually as possible on, on each player, uh, but also to increase the quality uh, of the training sessions. Okay. And can a player apply to the COE um, to work specifically on uh, one aspect of his game, or does he expect to be uh, trained in a well-rounded fashion? You want, do you want me to answer this, or...? Yeah, you, you take that one. Um, basically, you can say every time a player is uh, arriving at the CUE, then they have their own goals uh, of, of what they want to achieve and also what, what they want to develop. So this means that they, if they have a specific uh, area they want to, to develop, then of course we'll look into this, but we will also, of course, also give our advices of how the player can become uh, an even better player. So it's not like you, uh, you, ha you have to we'll say, take part in the overall plan, but it's important to remember that within each training session, we try to be an, as individualized as possible. So there is many opportunities to work on the specific areas that you want to, to develop. And last question, if a coach is interested in attending the COE, how, does they, how do they go about that? First of all, they, they, they reach out to us. It, as mentioned, the CUE is not just for players, it's also for, for coaches and for the development of, of coaches. So, um, yeah, they can be on a, on, a, on a scholarship. They can also be at the CUE um, uh, like for, for a longer period of time. That's actually something we, we individually talk to, to the coaches about. And then uh, the coaching team will be uh, involving them in the training and they can, first of all, see how we're doing things, but will also be, be involved in, in, in working with the players. Uh, uh, and then, then, of course, there'll be a lot of uh, sparring with the coaches who has enormous uh, amount of experience, which they are always open to, to, to share with the coaches, coaches being at, at the COE. So it's a really a, a nice opportunity. Excellent. I may think about that in the future. <laughs> You're very welcome, Richard. Okay, we have reached the end of today's webinar. Do you have any final words you'd like to share with the audience? First of all, we would like to say thank you for inviting us uh, to present the, the COE uh, in this webinar. The COE has a, we'll say, a special place in our heart, hearts in, uh, in Babington, Europe. So for us to have the opportunity to, to talk about something that we uh, cherish so, so high is uh, really uh, a, a big pleasure. So thank you very much. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we hope to see uh, more Pan Am players uh, at the CUE. Um, we want to, the CUE to be, be working with players uh, on, on a, what to say, in a global context. So it's uh, every player who can both benefit from the CUE, but also contribute to the level at the CUE is always uh, very, very welcome. Uh, so please reach out to us if you have any questions or if you have any interest of, uh, of, of becoming part of uh, the journey at the CUE. Any last words for you, Jorn? Well, I think uh, Jakob said, said it all. Um, also from me, thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure to do the uh, 
the presentation. I hope it was what you wanted to uh, have from us. And uh, I hope to see you all in the future at the CUE. Okay, many thanks, Professors Joran van Dijk and Jakob Hollenschläger for sharing such an interesting discussion with us. It has been very enriching talking with you and learning about your center of excellence. On behalf of Badminton Fan America, we thank you for your participation and we hope that you enjoyed today's session. Stay safe and stay well. <laughs>